Now let's talk about the sash. From the user's point of view, it's all about the sash. The sash is the interface between the fume hood and the user. It's the primary feature that provides you with protection. The sash is a protective barrier between you and the bad and dangerous stuff. Managing the sash is largely common sense and the lower the sash position, the better. While the sash provides protection, it is also a potential source of hazard. There can be contaminated air present at the edge of the sash. There can be a vortex of contamination just behind the sash. These vortices have the highest concentration of contaminants. You want to keep the edge of the sash or the sashes as far away from your breathing zone as possible. You may have heard the term breathing zone before but generally, it's the area from your chest to the top of your head. You want the sash glass between you and the bad stuff. And yes, there are different kinds of sashes. The most common is vertical rising, which is a single sash glass that goes up and down like a window. And then there are combination or combo sashes, which have sliding panels that move left to right and that are inside a vertically rising frame. Regardless of the sash type, the only reason you want the sash open, fully open, is for setup. A very common mistake is working with a fume hood in full open position. Lowering the sash is better. The sash movement should be easy. Many sashes can be operated with one hand from any position along the sash handle, and many newer hoods often have auto sashes that move with the assistance of a motor. Hood sashes are generally made from some type of safety glass, either tempered safety glass or laminated safety glass. This safety glass is used to offer you more protection and to minimize the likelihood of the sash itself breaking and becoming part of an incident. But whatever type of sash your hood has, keeping it closed when not in use and open as little as possible when using it is the right approach. The glass is there to protect you from the hazards. Fume hoods are very expensive to operate. They require large amounts of air to function properly. In most modern hoods, the amount of air the fume hood uses is determined by how much the sash is open. The smaller the opening, the less air and energy the fume hood will use. So generally, a closed sash uses much less air than an open sash. One of the fume hood's functions is to exhaust the polluted air outside and away from the building. As this air is exhausted, an equal amount of fresh air has to be supplied to the lab. This supply air has to be conditioned, heated or cooled, and the humidity has to be controlled. The real cost of operating the hood is replacing that air that's being exhausted. When you exhaust less, you need less replacement or supply air thus saving money. While you might not have thought much about it, fume hood fires are another common hazard. While there are many reasons for fires, let's look at the role of the sash in a fire. In case of a fire, close the sash completely to minimize the amount of air feeding the fire. The sash also keeps the fire inside the hood and minimizes its spread. The proper action when a fire does occur varies. You need to understand the SOP of your lab and respond accordingly. This is a very complex topic that varies from lab to lab, and because of its complexity, we offer a training module that focuses just on fume hood fires. Fires are very dangerous and expensive events, so preventing them should be an overriding objective. Small fires can quickly spread and become a major event. In fact, a small fire resulted in the death of a researcher at UCLA, partially because she was not wearing a lab coat. Given the material she was working with, she should have not only been wearing a lab coat, but a fire retardant lab coat. 
Not only do fires harm people, they damage equipment, destroy work, and even a small fire can take a building out of service for months, displacing the users and destroying research. But fires do happen, and the sash is there to protect you. Back to your breathing zone. Given the complexity of laboratory ventilation and room conditions, it's nearly impossible for any hood to contain 100% of the time. We can almost guarantee some loss of containment. In many of the demonstration videos, we use smoke or theatrical fog to help you visualize the airflow and show loss of containment. But in real life, the fugitive chemicals are likely to be invisible and maybe even odorless. So what you can't see can harm you. Whether or not you inhale those fugitive chemicals is greatly influenced by the position of the sash in relationship to your breathing zone. Keeping the sash closed as much as reasonable helps protect you. Now let's talk about explosions. They come in all shapes and sizes and can be caused in many different ways. From a boiling breaker exploding to an explosion caused by flammable vapors. The most common byproduct of an explosion is shrapnel. In a fume hood, the most common shrapnel is broken glass. And with broken glass often comes chemical splashes. Again, the sash is there to be a barrier between the event and you. Like fires, explosions are all too common. They're harder to predict and harder to prevent. The difference is that the damage is usually concentrated on those using the hood or those nearby the explosion. Remember, from the user's point of view, the fume hood is a PPE. It's also important to understand all the PPEs and safety devices that a fume hood user should be aware of. The standards are a lab coat and safety glasses. They're a must. Things like gloves, face shields, goggles, maybe even a respirator may be appropriate depending on what you're doing. You need to understand the risk and hazards of the material you're working with. But just in case there is an incident, you should also be aware of things like the fire extinguisher, the eye wash, and the safety shower, and know how to properly use them. The sash is there to protect you, and the degree of protection depends on how you use the sash.